Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So as promised, I'm following up with a full review of the LG G7 ThinQ. I've been using the phone for a week now, and if you watch the other videos, you know I came over from a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. So there's some fundamental differences there. The biggest being that the S9 Plus has 6 gigs of RAM and the LG G7 has 4 gigs. But you're also working with a little bit less screen and you know, really with this Snapdragon 845 process, processor that's in both of them, it pretty much pans out in the wash. Also, uh, the big difference is in the screen. The S9 Plus has a AMOLED screen and the G7 has a LCD IPS panel. So, if you don't know the background on these two things, the AMOLED screens are really good at producing dark colors, especially blacks, uh, which gives you really good video experience and things like that. But during the overall brightness, being able to see them out in the sun when you're out walking around, they kind of fall short a little bit versus the LCD, whereas the LCD has a much better white balance and the overall brightness is typically better. And of course you can see them better out in the sun, so that's cool too. Uh, one nice thing about the LG G7 ThinQ is it has a brightness boost uh, on the display slider so you can adjust the brightness. Uh, I don't really use the auto brightness which you can, um, but I really just like to run it at 100% all the time, which might be part of the reason that my battery life, not, battery life is not so great. <laughs> but either way, uh, it's been a very enjoyable experience. It shoots 4K video, which is great. And it's got dual 16 megapixel cameras. One of them is a standard lens, the other one is a wide lens. It's not quite as wide lens as the LG G6, which is kind of a step back a little bit, but it's still better than you know, the industry standard of not having a wide lens camera. And really the wide lens gets such good pictures. It's one of those niceties where you can go out and you get that offset, you know, step back um, viewpoint where you can see further, you know, on the left and right, really all the way around uh, and get more in the picture. So that's super cool. It has an eight megapixel front facing camera, uh, which is good. Uh, I'm not much of a selfie taker, but it'll get the job done. I, I'm not huge into that so if you are it takes great pictures if you're not you're not really losing anything it has 64 gigs of onboard storage expandable up to 512 512 gigabyte i'm sorry two terabyte sd card it has a 3000 milliamp battery which is the same as the samsung galaxy s9 has now the s9 plus uh, has a larger battery but really i don't like comparing the lg g7 to the s9 plus because it's the plus model and the LG G7 doesn't have a plus model, but it fits squarely in between uh, the other two devices where the S9 having a 5.8 inch screen and I believe the S9 Plus has a 6.2 inch screen. Of course, the Note has a 6.3. So the LG G7 6.1 is a formidable adversary. Of course, like I said, it doesn't have the extra battery life, so you get a little bit uh, off on the battery mark for that. But with which quick charge rolls nowadays, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I always have my charger with me when I'm at work. And, you know, on a heavy use day, I'll charge it up, you know, at about four o'clock before I get ready to come home just to make sure that I don't have to charge it when I get home. But, you know, on a light usage day, it'll carry me all the way till the evening. So that's good. All right. So you've watched me sit here and talk about this a lot. So I want to get into the actual phone. So what I have on here now is the Rinky Air Case. It's the clear model. Uh, I like it a lot. I'm using the Magenta Color LG G7. I am doing a follow-up review on the case as well. So I did get a couple cases from Rinky to show off. I got the Rinky Fusion X case. I have that in three colors and then I have this Rinky Air Case I have in three colors as well. So first things first, we'll go ahead and show off the fingerprint sensor. Boop. So it's not the fastest in the West. I mean, if you're playing quick draw, uh, you're not going to win, but I mean, it's comfortable. It works well. I don't have any issues with it. Uh, of course, you've got your power button over there on the right, and you have your dedicated Google Assistant button here on the left, along with your volume rocker. They're spaced out well enough. I don't really accidentally hit the volume button instead of the, I'm sorry, the, the assistant button instead of the volume button. But I do find myself accidentally uh, hitting it just because it's kind of hanging out down here by itself. So every once in a while I'll hit it and then if you hit it, of course, it runs off on its own. 
So you get the first vibration, which lets you know that you've activated it. And then the second vibration lets you know that it's okay for you to talk, which is great because with former, you know, voice assistants I've used before, it's hit or miss with waiting for the right time to actually start talking. And if you're following around with following along with the text, you can see that Google does a fantastic job of voice to text, which is great. Anyway, I'm going to turn that off now. Now, if you swipe over to the right, then you can go ahead and get over to the the uh, update bar for the Google Assistant that has some of the popular stuff that you may want to look at, which is common with both Bixby and as well as the iPhone. Now, you've got this little slider here. Uh, I have mine turned off. You can customize it and set it up for things that you want. Uh, you can even remove it just by dragging it up to the top there, but you can put it on fixed mode where it stays in the same spot. Otherwise, just take it and you can throw it to the other side of the screen. It won't stop in the middle. It'll gravitate towards whichever side is closest. But it's kind of like a quick options you can do for the screencast. Oh, screenshot there. Whoop. And you can customize it for quick options, for text, for contacts. You can set it up for different contacts that you like and you talk to the most. All you have to do just hit the thing, hit the little arrow and it expands and it contracts. So easy peasy. I don't like it though, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I just did that for display purposes. Okay, so this is the home screen. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything here. I keep most of my social media on the front here. There's two different options that you can do. You can have an app drawer or you can run it without an app drawer. Uh, I don't like the app drawer because I can't swipe it up. And that was one of the things I really like with the TouchWiz interface on my S9 Plus is I could just swipe up and it would get to my app drawer so I didn't have to have everything hanging out here on the screen. But if you set it up right and have it the way you want, it's not that big of a deal. So common stuff I put closer and then you can see I've got junk you know, farther away. Uh, T-Mobile does have some built-in apps. Of course, it stays in its own folder, so I don't really mess with it. Uh, I'm super happy today because if you're signed up for it, Alto's Odyssey came out. So I just downloaded that this afternoon. So I'm super excited about playing that when I get done with this review. All right, so we swipe down from the top and we get to our quick options. And then of course, if you swipe down again, you get to the expanded quick options, which has two different pages. You can edit that, which is not really worthwhile. All that's in there is color inversion and nearby Google Play something. I'm not even gonna click that because I don't wanna interrupt the video. But you can go ahead and you know, drag and drop and edit your panel there. So we're gonna call that good. Now, one of the cool things that you're gonna see here is you got your DTS X 3D surround, which is cool. It gives you an enhanced sound profile. And of course that stereo goodness with the uh, 3D, three dimensional sound stuff. So you can kind of get a feel for where the sound's coming from instead of all just uploaded up front. This, the Hi-Fi Quad DAC, the 32 bit sound is legit. Uh, I was using it all yesterday. Uh, I've got a set of Skull Candy Aviators, which I paid like 180 bucks for like two or three years ago. And I have used them quite extensively and it sounds phenomenal. Uh, the only way you can use the 32-bit quad DAC is if you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack uh, where you have your headphones plugged in. It doesn't work over wireless. So if you plug it in over wireless, this is gonna stay shaded. You can't activate it. Uh, if you do turn it on though, it has some mixer options where you can adjust the sound profile, which is super sweet. And I may actually do another video just showing off the 32-bit. Of course, I can't let you hear it. You're not gonna be able to tell much of a difference. Uh, you might be able to if I plug it into a speaker through the direct line in, just so you can see that there is volume enhancement, there is clarity improvement, and overall, it just sounds great. Now, the other thing you need to bear in mind is 32-bit quad DAC is 192 uh, hertz, uh, 190 megahertz, Hertz, megahertz, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's Hertz. And essentially once you get into that category, you're talking about lossless sound. So FLAC or uh, HD audio is preferred so you can really maximize it. It doesn't do you any good to be running, you know, 32 bit quad DAC sound and run it listening to 92 kilobit, 128 kilobit, you know, low quality audio. So if you're expecting to use it with like iTunes, Napster, something like that, and you have the sound quality turned down, you're not gonna maximize the experience and get to hear that super awesome sound the way that it's designed to. And really what draws in people to this super awesome audio. All right, so that's enough on that, but it's really cool. 
So we're going to go into the full settings. They have it partitioned into four different categories, network, sound, display, and general. Now in the network setting, you didn't really care that much. Uh, you've got screen sharing, which is cool. But that's about all that's worthwhile here. Uh, other than, of course, your Bluetooth. Disable NFC uh, if you're not using it. Save on the battery. Android Beam. I have all that stuff turned off. Now, in the sound profile, you can mess with that stuff. You can customize all the good things for your notification sounds, your ringtones, uh, volume, sound profile. Of course, you can go in here and mess with the DTS and also the quad DAC. So you can, here's what I was talking about with the sound balance. You can adjust it. Digital filter, you've got several different sound, pr sound presets. And then the volume here, which I have turned all the way off right now. And then you've got different e equalizers. You can manually adjust the equalizer and custom. But there's plenty of different um, preset ones to choose from, which are good. I keep mine on classic. It's a good balance. Uh, it helps the vocal stand out, but it lowers the bass a little bit to where you get more of a solid hit than just the you know, carrying um, annoying bass. All right, so let me go here to display. Now, display has some cool stuff. You've got the new second screen. So with the second screen, you can either put it on standard where it looks like the iPhone X where you get the notch. This one is a virtual notch. You get the extension of that screen up top. Really, it's not an extension. It's just extending the white up there because as you can see, it has all the same options up there. It just looks like it's a digital bezel is what it is. So you click on the standard here and it floats up there, which is cool. Uh, custom here, you can change it so you can change the colors. So you get that cool matching magenta color to go along with the phone. Uh, I just keep mine on black. Uh, honestly, this, I could care less whether it's there or not. Um, I've had mine on the regular <clears throat> notchless screen since I got it and I really haven't been any worse for wear. Of course, wallpapers, fonts, you can change all that stuff up. Always on display gives you a couple different options there. You can choose digital clock, analog, you know, whatever the different setup is you want there. Even your signature, which has been a carryover since the V10, which was kind of cool. It was nice with the little scroller up top and you're like, hello, and it shows your name. So that's good too. You can adjust the resolution on the fly so you can get the ultra HD, you can get regular full 1080p, but with the aspect ratio, of course, it's elongated and stretched out. So you can do modified 720, modified 1080, and then of course you get your full Ultra HD. Comfort view, which adjusts the blue light. So you can turn the blue light filter on, which is good. You can even schedule it so it sets up uh, a certain time. So if you wanted to come on in the evening, like let's say 10 o'clock when you get ready to go to bed, or if you're a night owl like me, you know, 12, one o'clock in the morning, you want to take that extra strain off your eyes, supposedly will help you fall asleep better. Uh, doesn't really help me, but if it helps you, uh, more power to you. Brightness, 100% uh, all day, all night. Now, at nighttime, I kind of turn it down a little bit because uh, if you look at your phone in the middle of the night at like 4 o'clock in the morning and you wake up, it's uh, a bit much, especially with this IPS LCD panel. So you can turn it all the way down or you can turn it all the way up. Uh, I like to leave it up because it just looks really good. You can do the auto brightness, which changes based off of the surrounding lighting and the settings. So... You know, if you like to do that, it'll save your battery life, that's for sure. Uh, the screen timeout, I have been on five minutes because sometimes I do a lot of stuff on my phone and I hate it timing out. But you can change it, 15 second, 30 second. Of course, you see all the intervals there and you can always keep it on where it will only turn off when you hit the power button if you want. Um, that's about it for here. And then the general stuff. So your normal things, account, storage, battery, uh, all that cool stuff knock uh, the double tap on the screen to wake which is great lg started this with the lg g2 which was a phenomenal phone especially when it came out but double tap you're good to go i'll go ahead and hit the fingerprint sensor there and away we go so last but not least i want to go ahead and show off the camera the camera has a couple different things built in it has the ai camera and one of the biggest things the selling points that lg has had with this is this artificial intelligence camera uh, I'm really not into a lot of camera stuff, but I did go through the painstaking process, not really painstaking, but I did go through the process of testing it out and I'm going to show it off here on the camera so you can kind of see what it does. What it does is it identifies different types of objects so that it can optimize, uh, the shot for whenever you take the picture so you can get a better shot versus just doing the regular, 
uh, autofocus. So I put a couple items up here on my table. So we can go ahead and look there and it will pop up and it will tell you, let me put on AI cam. It will tell you kind of like what the object is. So it's like, well, it thinks my phone thinks a flip flop, home interior. Um, go ahead and click there. Move it around and see if it picks up some of the names so you can see them there. Earlier it was like all over the place. Uh, it's not being very artificially intelligent right now. So it is on auto. All right, AI cam, there we go. So the red close up office, arid, it adjusted for the auto there. Uh, I am gonna show you here because it'll detect brightness too. So ta -da. one person close up, text, document, text, show one person, there we go. It, it, it's all over the place with the way that it detects things, but it automatically adjusts. And I don't know if you can tell it. See, it goes ahead and thinks it thinks it's a desert because it's a light wood table. But it automatically adjusts things based off of what you're taking pictures of. There we go. Refreshment. It changes there for the drink, for the water. So, I mean, it's okay. I got kind of a lot of stuff out there on the table. I mean, red poodle document, it, parking. It picks up all sorts of weird things. Um, but it does adjust and it does well with the color balance stuff for the pictures and everything. So if you're into this cool nifty stuff, then it's a nice feature. But otherwise, I haven't really found that it's improved my quality of life all that much. So it's not something to write home about. Uh, the integrated Google Assistant, I really like. It even has a Google camera on here. So we'll go ahead and tap on that again to get back to normal mode. It's got Google Lens. Now with Google Lens, you can you see little, you know, little fairy dots here that pop up. You can you can click on things. So like I'll click on this brush right here. Oh, there we go. It picked up the school glue. <laughs> so I'll confirm that it is school glue, and it'll look up the results. There we go. Elmer's liquid uh, school glue, four ounces. So that's kind of cool. Um, we'll go ahead and go back. So we'll click on that. It might be one of these. Uh, it's, Still picking up on the glue. There we go. Looks like a brush. Yes. Thumbs up. So now it's going to go out. Uh, what it says, glad you like it. So apparently it's not good at finding brushes. Let's see if it picks up the pop tarts. Let's see if I can get this on the screen for you. All right. So there we go. Looks like we got pop tarts back there. All right. Pop tarts. It found the identical one there. So we have the 16 value pack of pop tarts. So you can do that. And then it'll throw it over on Google. Apparently it's $4.37 through jet.com. Uh, eBay apparently wants to charge you a lot of money for Pop-Tarts. And there we go, I'll click on that cup. Nope, still got the Pop-Tart. I still got the Pop-Tart. So it likes to focus and fixate on things. Let's see if we can get the Get that back there? Nope. All right, so it did find my drapes. So it put those on there. Uh, $15.14, it's about right. I picked them up at Walmart. They have a lot of the same pattern. <coughs> so it'll find like items as well if they're out there and available. So there is that. Uh, the biggest selling point on this, of course, it has portrait mode, which you can put that on there so you can get portrait pictures. Uh, I'm not taking a portrait of myself right now, but it'll give you that focus, you know, in the front with the, you know, digital bokeh effect. So it'll blur out the things in the background and take a good portrait of your face or somebody else's face. Now, the important thing here is you've got two different modes. Uh, you've got single mode, which, you know, it's normal regular shooting mode, and then you've got the wide lens. So it takes it back a notch. So as you can see there, it's kind of like that fisheye effect where it zooms back and you get everything in the image. And then we'll go back to normal. So normal, it's really easy to switch back and forth. Wide lens. Now if you want to switch it from regular picture to selfie, all you have to do is you can swipe from left to right and it'll turn it around or you can swipe from up to down or down to top to bottom, any which way but loose and you can switch it back to a selfie. Uh, it's very easy. 
to use. I mean, it, it takes good pictures. The only thing that I have to complain about it is the inconsistency with the pictures. And I've been using the S9 Plus for a while and it takes phenomenal pictures, like great pictures. Uh, this one can take great pictures and it can take really good pictures and the colors will pop and it'll look great. And let me see here. So I've taken quite a bit of pictures with this and it's like, you can be taking pictures in similar settings. I mean, it's like an identical shot, and but the lighting seems to give it fits sometimes. I can't really say fits because it takes fairly quick pictures, but I'm sitting here in the same spot and I took this picture and I also took this picture. And I'll have to go through and take like two or three shots sometimes so I can get the best picture instead of just getting a great shot the first time. And sometimes it does take a great shot on the first time. But not always. Uh, yellows really stand out. This is my Taco Bell food the other day. Uh, I love Taco Bell. Hopefully you do too. But the Enchirito and the Triple Air Nachos is fire. So good. I got hot sauce. And that's a picture of my uh, iPhone 8. So here's an evening time shot when I was going to Best Buy. As you can see, the yellows, they still stand out really well. Blues stand out pretty good. Uh, it does take good low light shots. Uh, it's not the best in the world. The Pixel, I believe, is still the best. But I'm a casual photo taker, so this to me, I think is good. Uh, I think it stands out well, and it picks up lighting. It picks up vibrant colors and reproduces them well. Uh, it makes it where they stand out. It's not oversaturated like Samsung is. Samsung likes to oversaturate everything, which, I mean, is cool. Here's another picture. So it's like coffee cup right there. Same coffee cup, but I mean, it's like almost identical, except for the fact that it's darker and it doesn't look as good. Now you can see it's kind of faded out in the background there, so it focuses up on the object in the front, which is cool. There's another picture, so it's like, the quality of these pictures varies in brightness and in quality. So I had to take several of them uh, to get an ideal coffee cup picture, you know, if there is such a thing. But either way, that's just some of the stuff. I mean, I did take the pictures here of this Crepe myrtle blossom in my front yard, and I mean, they look ridiculously good. Out with optimum lighting, uh, it takes great pictures. The way it blurs out the background and it focuses in on the object in the front. I mean, you can see the rose bushes there in the back. You can't really see them. Uh, the waxiness of the leaves, the brightness. I mean, it just really pops. It looks phenomenal. And the color saturation and the balance is on point. So this camera can take really good pictures. It can take really eh pictures. So you really wanna take multiple shots to make sure that you're getting the good quality picture. And of course, as you learn, uh, you'll be able to get better pictures on the fly. The other thing is, uh, it gets kind of warm, especially down here. I guess the processor is down here on the bottom side of the phone. Whenever you're using it, you have the screen on for a long time, you're running apps, especially anything intensive. Even with this case on, it'll start to heat up. You can feel it through the case. You can feel it especially without the case. So there is that. Uh, and also the other complaint that I have is the battery life is not the best in the world. But then again, I don't do any battery saving measures at all. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm very, probably very hard on my battery because I leave the screen on for a long time. I use it a lot. But even with that being said, I can still get, you know, from seven o'clock in the morning till four o'clock and use it however I want and, and still have, you know, about 20% left over. So it'll get you through a full work day, even if you're using it a lot during the work day on an off day. Uh, on a day I'm not using my phone very much or I'm not sitting there with the screen on uh, using you know now Instagram because I've been hooked to that for the last week. Um, it'll get you through a full day. And the nice thing is, is with the quick charge, it recharges really fast. It has wireless charging, which wireless charging is not very fast, but it's a nice option if you're sitting there and you just wanna kind of charge your phone on the fly while you're at the desk. Either way, uh, all in all, I'm super happy with it. Coming over from the S9 Plus, I expected to be not so happy with it. I've had other LG phones in the past, the G5 being my most recent one, which was kind of a letdown. Um, it just had, it had a lot of issues and the whole modular design thing was kind of a wash. But I mean, it was integral in kind of setting the stage for other phones like the Motorola's to come out with their modular attachments, which is cool. Uh, the G2 and the G2 Flex uh, were spot on, two of my favorite phones of all times in the Android world. So I went and looked at this one several times before I went ahead and decided to buy it. And I was like, man, it's lightweight. Uh, the form factor is fantastic. Uh, the performance is good. I had question marks in my brain about the software, but the software has been good. Yeah, before it was kind of intrusive. 
Yeah, you pull over on the screen, you get the whole stretchy thing. Really, it's just kind of gimmicky to me. And I think that they really hammered home and refined a lot of stuff with the user interface on this one. So I've been very happy with it. I haven't really noticed any performance problems. Um, it will get choppy every once in a while when you have a whole bunch of stuff open at the same time. But I mean, you're gonna get that with pretty much any phone when you have that many apps going on at once. And that's where it would be really nice to have that six gigs of RAM. And it's not a killer by any means uh, as far as wanting to get this phone. Uh, there are definitely reasons to get this phone versus you know an iPhone, the latest generation, or even the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Uh, I would recommend it over the 8 Plus. Uh, the 9 Plus, you know, at, at that point, it's really like, do you want Samsung Pay? Do you want a Samsung Watch? Or do you want the Apple ecosystem? Do you want to have iMessage? Which, that's one of the reasons why I have an iPhone 8, is because a lot of my family and friends use iMessage. So I, I carry two phones all the time. And that and, you know, gives me an excuse to review them whenever they come out. So uh, I think it's a solid phone. Sound-wise, there's nothing on the market that can compete with it. The AI stuff I still think is kind of gimmicky. You may buy into it more than I do, but that's not really my bag. So um, the IPS LCD panel is bright and gorgeous, and I think really, in my opinion, has the best screen out of the flagship phones right now. I haven't tested out the HTC U12 just because of the availability issues. I haven't seen one in person, but brightness, uh, contrast, representation of colors, saturation overall, I think this between the iPhone and the Samsung has the best screen. And I even saw differing opinions about, you know, concerns with the panels whenever they came out. But if you want to know the truth, LG makes panels for iPhone and they make panels for um, the Pixel as well. So you've got the Pixel 2 XL as an LG screen. Uh, I believe the screen in the iPhone 10, I think is an LG, but I know that LG is building the panels for the new iPhone. So they know what they're doing when it comes to screens and with sound. Uh, as long as they can continue to have a more minimalistic approach when it comes to their user interface, I think they're going to go a long way in the future. And I'm sorry this video is so long, but it's so comprehensive. And I want to give you a rundown of everything. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate you watching and thank you for any of you who subscribe and share this content. Also check out the Instagram page that I have now, tech odyssey, tech underscore odyssey. And as always, I'm gonna to continue to put more content out. I am going to make a LG G7 ThinQ and S9 Plus side-by-side -side comparison. So you'll be able to see both of those firsthand. And yeah, so that's coming down the pipeline along with some other reviews of other stuff. So like I said, thanks, I appreciate it. I always appreciate your support. Ask questions, that's what I'm here for. And my phone screen is turning off, so that means it's time to call the night. So y'all have a good, good one, and I'll see y'all next time.